Okay, guys. So yesterday we started with the complex sentences. We explained the complex sentences. Let me in brief repeat what we talked about complex sentences. First of all, the complex sentence is made up of a dependent and independent clause uh, joined together. So in every complex sentence, you have to find a dependent and an independent clause. Okay. Um, what do we mean by dependent and independent? Independent clause is the simple sentence that can stand alone. It has a complete subject, complete predicate, complete idea. It doesn't need help from anything else. While the dependent clause, it has a subject and a predicate, but it, it doesn't give a, a complete idea. It still needs help from something else to become a complete sentence. And in every dependency clause, you will find a subordinating conjunction. Okay, so the dependency clause is like a baby. It needs help from others or from something else. Okay, to become a complete sentence. While the independency clause can stand alone. When we join the dependency clause and the independency clause together, they make a, a complex sentence. Okay. Subordinating conjunctions are like before, after, if, so, as, although, though, when, where, why, who, that. Okay, these are examples of subordinating conjunctions. So let's start with part D. Read each clause. Here I gave you six clauses. You have to read them. On the lines that provided, write I if the clause is independent and can stand alone as a sentence. Write D if it is dependent and cannot stand alone. Underline the subordinating conjunction if it's a dependent clause. So if you find a dependent clause, so it must include a subordinating conjunction. So I have to underline the subordinating conjunction. Let's start with Amal. You're the first name on my list. Yes. Yalla, Amal. Clause number one. I, yeah, number one. I was nippy with... Him. With him. I was snippy with him. Is it dependent or independent? Ask yourself. In can, can it stand alone or no? Independent. Independent, independent. clause. Excellent. So we write I. Bravo. It's an independent clause. Thank you, Amal. Karim Bitar. Yes. Number two. Because I was running late for work. Because I was running late for work. I. Is it independent? It can stand alone? It, yeah. can, sta it can stand alone? Read it again. Because I was running late for work. So what happened because I was running late for work? Is it completed? No, it's not complete. It's not complete. So it cannot stand alone. So it is dependent. So it is what? Yeah. Dependent, we yeah. write D. Okay. Okay, so since it is a dependent clause, so it must uh, contain a subordinating conjunction. Where is the subordinating conjunction, Karim? I was right. Subordinating conjunction. Subordinating because. Because. Thank you. So we underline because. Karim Kirdi. Thank you, Karim Bitar. What's the meaning of, of snippy? Yes. Karim Kirdi, number three. Ali, you were saying something? What's the meaning of snippy? The what's first the... one, snippy. Oh, okay. What's the meaning of snippy? It's uh, sharp. It, it comes like a uh, sharp, okay? I was rude with him. I was sharp. That's what we mean. Oh. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Karim Bitar, number three, after my parents agreed. You said Karim Kirdi, me or Karim 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 Kirdi, Karim Kirdi, sorry. Yes. Number three, Karim. After my parents agreed. Dependent or independent? Independent. It can stand alone. Miss, no. read it well. After my parents agreed. Do I understand what they want to tell me? 
Karim, do you understand what the sentence tries to tell you here? After my yes. parents agreed. Is it complete? Dependent. It's dependent. dependent. So it's incomplete. A dependent clause. Where is, this, where is the subordinating conjunction? What is the subordinate? After. After. Excellent. Thank you, Karim. Ali Hamoud. Yes, miss. Number four. You told me what they had decided. Hmm. They told uh, me what they had decided. Independent. Independent. Thank you, Ali. Lana. Yes. Mm -hmm. We we were told it had been cancelled. We were, were told it had been cancelled. Independent. Independent. Thank you, Yalana. Number six. Jude. Yes. Number six, please. I'm inquiring about the program. Mm -hmm. Dependent. Dependent, bravo. Where is the subordinating conjunction? Uh, when? When, excellent. Bravo, guys. So, now we have to talk a little bit about some subordinating conjunctions. I'm going to talk about when, why, where, who, that, which, for example. Okay. Some are called relative adverbs. Some are called relative pronouns. Okay. Uh, why, where, and when are called relative adverbs. Okay. Keep them in mind. Why, when, and where are called relative adverbs. While, who, uh, which, that, uh, whose, for example, are called, whom are called relative pronouns. Why? We call them relative pronouns because after them, I, you will notice that I'm talking about a noun or a pronoun. Okay? But when I say relative adverb, it shows me after it that I'm talking about maybe time or a reason or a place. Okay, that's why we call them relative adverbs and relative pronouns. So, again, I repeat, why, where, why, where, when are called relative adverbs, okay? Uh, who, who's, that, uh, which, whom are called relative pronouns. So, in, let's read each sentence. When we read each sentence, we have to circle the subordinating conjunction, okay? We have, in each sentence, you will find a subordinating conjunction. We circle it. Then we have to tell if it's a relative adverb or a, a relative pronoun, okay? I will do number one for you. When John wrote an amazing paragraph, he earned an A plus in the course. Course, we mean in his subject. Okay, the uh, subordinating conjunction here is when. When is the subordinating conjunction and when is a relative adverb. So I have to write R A, relative adverb. Okay. Who wants to try number two? Ali Fawaz. Ali Fawaz. Ali. Ali. Miss. Uh... Ali is not here. He cannot hear me. Amal. Yes. What do you want to say? I want to ask, uh, ask something. Ask, I still, tell us, please. Uh, I still don't understand the uh, relative uh, pronoun. That's nothing, just who, whose, whom, which, and that are called relative pronouns. If you go back to your book, grammar book, you will find them written there and you can memorize them. When, where, and why are called relative adverbs. That's what you should only know. The, the, when, where, and why are called relative adverbs. Who, whom, whose, which, and that are called relative pronouns. That's it. Okay? okay. Right. Yeah. Who wants to do number two? Quickly, please. Ms. Lillian? Yes, Lana? Ms. R-A, it's relative? Adverb. 
RA is relative adverb, RP is relative pronoun. Okay, can I do the next one? Yes. Yes, do it. Never go to a doctor <laughs> whose office plants have died. Relative, um, relative. Where is it first? Where is the subordinating pronoun? Relative pronoun, but where is it? Whose? Whose? Excellent. Whose? Whose is a relative pronoun. Bravo, Yamet. Okay. Number three. Who wants to do number three? Who wants to do number three? Ali Hamoud? Me. Yes. Yalla, Ali Hamoud, number three. I want to visit the Number island. three. This is the book that everyone is talking about. This is the book that everyone is talking about. Relative... Relative adverb. What is it? Ah, uh, that. That is a relative adverb, yeah, Ali. I said that that is a relative adverb. Pay attention. No, oh. that is a relative pronoun. Keep in mind when, where, and why are relative adverbs. The others are relative pronouns, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, yeah, Ali. Let's continue. Jude, again. Yes. Number four. I want to visit the ice. I want to visit the island. Island. Silent island. island. Where mm. my grandma was born. Mm -hmm. Where is the subordinating conjunction here? Relative adverb. Uh, where is it? Where? Where? Excellent, Jude. Where is a relative adverb? Thank you. Okay, Karim Bitar, again, number five. Karim? Okay. Yes? Number five, please. Number five. I don't like people who interrupt me. Uh-huh. R-A. Hey, where is it? Show me. Um, what is the subordinating conjunction? People. People? Subordinating conjunction, pay attention. Like the ones that were circling. When, who's, where, that. Uh, like, it's like. Yeah, Karim, mess. We're circling the subordinating conjunctions here. The words uh, that we join, we find them in the dependent uh, clauses. Who? Who? Who is what? Relative adverb or relative pronoun? Pronoun. Pronoun. Relative pronoun. That's right. It's a relative pronoun. Thank you, Karim. Karim Kirdi? Karim Kirdi? Yes. Number six, Mess. This is a George who you met at my house last week. Where is the subordinating conjunction? Relative adverb. First of all, show me the subordinating conjunction. Where is it? Whom? Whom? Whom is a relative adverb or relative pronoun? Pronoun. Pronoun. Again, I repeat, guys. When, where, and why are relative adverbs? The others are relative pronouns. Last one. Thank you, Karim. Can I do number seven? Can I do number seven? Yes, Amal, do it. He didn't admit why he had cheated on the on the okay. test. Why? Why? Is a, re a relative adverb. Bravo, relative adverb. Excellent, guys. Excellent. Proud of you. Yeah. Um, uh, we still have one more question in the complex sentences. If you remember yesterday, I said when we have to write the complex sentence, when we join the dependent and independent clauses together, there is a certain way to join them. Join them. Either I start with the dependent clause, and when I start with the dependent clause, I have to add a comma when I finish it, then I move to the independent. Or when I start with the independent clause, I should not add a comma in the middle. Example. Let me give you an example. 
Okay. I was absent from school because I was sick. Notice something here. I started with the independent clause. The dependent clause is because I was sick. I didn't add a comma between them. But if I start with the dependent clause, if I start because I was sick, this way I have to add a comma after the dependent clause. Because I was sick, comma, I was absent from school, period. So you see the difference? When you start with the independent clause, you don't need to add any commas. But when you start with the independent clause, you have to add a comma. Okay? Clear? Now, rewrite the sentences below, adding commas and correcting mistakes in punctuation. We have to see these uh, complex sentences if they are written correctly or no. Who wants to do number one? The tickets were already sold out. Come on when we arrive. Who wants to do number one, Lana? Yes. Yala. What is the mistake here in the punctuation? The tickets were already sold out mm -hmm. when we arrived. Uh -huh. So what should we change? What should we change here? Where? What what should we change? The tickets. The ticket. are, why would you change the tickets? The tickets mess. There is a mistake in punctuation. Commas and punctuation only. That's it. The mistakes are only in punctuation. Mess as the examples that I gave to you. And notice here. The tickets were already sold out when we arrived. We started with the independent clause. When we start with the independent clause, then I must not add a comma here. So here I must move the comma, remove it, sorry. The tickets were already, already sold out. I have to remove the comma and I write when we arrived, okay? The tickets were already sold out when we arrived. We should not add a comma here because we started with the independent clause. So the comma is wrong. I have to remove it. Number two. Who wants to do number two? Um, Amal, you want to do it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um. We decided to adopt comma after weighing, weighing our options. Weighing, weighing our options. Okay. What is the mistake here? Uh, the mistake is the comma. Comma. I should remove it also because I started with the independent clause. We right. We decided to adopt after weighing our options, okay? Miss, can I do the third one? Lana, yes. We had an accident because the road was ill-kept. Okay. Mm. We, we remove the commas. We have to remove the commas. Both of the commas must be removed. We had an accident because the road was ill kept. Okay. Good. Yeah. Number four. Who wants to do number four? Karim Bitar. Yes. Yeah. Do number four. And although, the, although, although I think in the military, military, Joe is having trouble finding a job. Mm -hmm. Notice something here. We started with the dependent clause, although he was in the military. So what should we do when we start with the dependent clause? 
<laughs> Although he was in the military, since I started with the dependent clause, Ya Karim, then I have to add a comma after the dependent clause. Okay? Oh, comma? Yeah. After the military, we have to add a comma. Although he was in the military, although he was in the military, comma. So you see, when you start with the dependent clause, you have to add a comma after the dependent clause. Joe is having trouble finding a job. Okay? Okay, Here, guys. So again, I repeat, when you start with the independent clause, there is no need to add any comma. But when you start with the dependent clause, you have to add a comma after the dependent clause. Clear? Let's move on. Shufuha is a tech kit. 